What's going on everyone? Welcome into another guide for NO1800. So one of the most common questions I see asked is how to get to artisans and onto engineers without going broke. Your income is fluctuating wildly, supplies are dropping, and you just cannot figure out what to do. Well, hopefully through some tips and tricks and showing you how I built this uh, particular city up, I can help with that. So this is our current city right here of Pont du Redanges. We have a global population of 6,740 and an income balance of 3,454. Uh, we just entered the engineer tier recently and we have about uh, just over 600 of them unlocking the steam motors and the fuel production chain that is if you have the bright harvest dlc now before we get took it take a look at engineers a bit more and how to handle their all of their stuff let's look back at the city in some earlier stages and talk about some tips and ideas to help you manage your economy while working your way to this point so let's put the rewind on and let's go back in time to when the city was first founded. All right, so welcome to the quaint port town back in the early game. This is what I like to call the pre-industrial phase. We only recently unlocked the steel production at 300 workers. Um, so most of our people are still in their very basic jobs like farming, framework knitters, slaughterhouses, little things like that. Uh, maintenance costs are fairly low at this point, so things don't cost very much, and it is still very easy to maintain a positive balance. We have a very small population, just under 1,000, but we are making 584. So, small population, still a nice balance though. The biggest key to that is to not overbuild. Don't overbuild any of your production buildings. Now, how do you know how many for production buildings you need? Well, there is a handy in-game tool that you can find called the statistics screen. You can get to that several different ways. You can click on a building and click on statistics. You can click on your balance right here, or you can hit control Q to bring it up. Now, I'm not going to go into great detail as I have an entire video guide on this topic available on my channel. The link is in the description down below. But the very basic idea is to keep that green supply bar equal to or higher than the demand bar. A couple of examples right here. Our potatoes are actually perfectly balanced. We're creating, we're, we're, we have a production of four and we have a demand of four, so they're balanced. Right here, we have a current potential supply of four and we only need three, so we're actually making a little bit of extra. That's it, that is the very basic idea of it. If you see the demand is higher than the supply, build one building or chain as needed. Uh, this will help you not to overbuild things. If they only need two fisheries, don't build more than two fisheries. The same goes for all other basic and luxury goods that your people need at this level and on into the game. With a few exceptions, there is never a reason to build more than what your current needs are. It costs money that you're not making back in taxes, and goods piled up are goods not being consumed, and factories become idle, costing you money for, again, no benefit. If you have full warehouses of a good and you're low on income, turn some of those off. You can turn off a factory by pausing the production right here. You just pause it. Now, depending on the difficulty level, it may cost you none, or there may be a small uh, running cost. But you can pause the factory to stop the production and save a little bit of money. Uh, just don't forget to turn them back on later. That's that's kind of a key. Turn them off to save money. Don't forget to turn them back on so you don't run out of those goods that you need. Now, one of the early exceptions to this rule of don't build more than needed is the soap factory. Eli Bleakworth will, will pay around 384 coins, roughly. Yeah, 384 coins per ton of soap. And it is just a great way to make some nice cash early on. We'll talk about that more uh, in a bit in the next part. So let's just go ahead and jump ahead a little bit to the next stage of our city's development here. All right, here we are at the end of the worker tier. All basic and luxury goods, uh, good needs have been met except for beer at the moment. And we are actually rebuilding our schnapps production. Um, I had one that caught fire and I didn't realize it and it burnt down and so I had to rebuild it. Uh, we're not at beer just yet. Beer is a slightly more expensive chain to set up so I typically don't build beer until I get to artisans. 
Um, at this stage, your income is going to be fairly low unless you've been spamming farmers and workers just to try to artificially boost your income. Uh, that's because the steel chain is fairly expensive setup and you're not going to and you're going to need a lot of steel beams to both upgrade to artisans and for just about everything going forward. But so steel beams are going to be a detriment to your income early on. It will fix itself and you'll, you'll get the money back eventually. You'll start making plenty of money to support it. But for right now, it is a very expensive chain. Uh, you'll notice, though, that I only have one steelworks and one furnace. A lot of people, especially newer players who are trying to figure things out, go to the wiki or look up a production chain diagram and see that it says to build uh, like one iron mine, two charcoal kilns, two furnaces, and three steelworks. And then they go over to the weapons and they see, you know, to make... I forgot what it is over there. It's even more. It's it's like people end up with like six furnaces on their island and they can't figure out why they're going broke. And that's where the mistake is happening. Those diagrams are giving optimal zero waste layout chains. It's not meant to be taken as this is what you have to build when you unlock it. So what it means is that that's the maximum number of buildings for the fastest production in the chain can provide for. So in this case, it's the iron mine at 15 seconds or <clears throat> uh, yeah, the iron mine at 15 seconds. Sorry about that. Uh, you don't have to build three steel works or, you know, four to six furnaces and stuff to supply all this. You don't have to. It's totally not necessary. Uh, I build one steelworks, one furnace, and then one of each mine or a kiln, and that's it. Steel production is very expensive, and it can cripple you if you build too many. Uh, one furnace can support two steelworks, but each steelwork is another 200 coins in maintenance and workforce. It's a large investment in something you only need a little of at the very moment. And you can get more from Sir Archibald Blake. He is the guy at the uh, crown icon on the map you can buy steel beams from him so if you if you need more go grab him you can also set up a uh, supply a, uh, a buy order at your trading post here go under construction materials or wherever you want to buy and you can set up a buy and sell sell or a buy order and tell it how many you want to keep and anytime archie comes by he'll sell you some uh, your main goal, honestly, in the worker tier is to hurry up and get to artisans. That's that's really your goal. Get th get through the artisan tier, get the basics down, get them supplied, get a little bit of a surplus of workforce so you can get them into artisans. Even a fully supplied worker house pales in comparison to even a partially supplied artisan house. And you need to get to where the money is. Uh, speaking of money, let's go back to my mention of soap, actually. Um, as you can see, I actually have my soap with a minimum stock set of 30. And I have a schooner picking up uh, the excess soap. So it's picking up any soap over 30, and it's selling it over to uh, Wormway's prison to Eli for extra cash. It's definitely a good idea to do. Uh, a lot of people I also recommend maybe building an extra soap chain. Soap is very cheap, it's very simple to build, doesn't take a lot of workforce, and you can make a ton of money off of soap. So definitely a good idea to do that early on, get you some extra cash coming in. Um, my tip for doing that method, though, is as soon as you hit 300 workers, Archie starts selling steel beams. Go buy some from him as soon as possible. Then you go grab, at first you want to go grab a couple of more islands. You need one with at least hops and or red pepper on it, or two islands if you don't have one nearby. Make sure they're nearby as well. Don't go, you know, all the way over here to try to find uh, an island. Like, you know, don't go over here to get it. Try to find islands that are close by to you. You definitely want to use the nearby islands. That way it cuts down on travel times. So once you have a couple of islands, take the extra steel or go pick up a little bit more from Archie, bring it back to your main island and get soap up and running before you even have your steel works down. That's a great method to do. You can do that for the beer as well. Um, if you want to go ahead and get beer going before artisans. 
uh, get buy the steel from Archie, set up a couple of soap, set you up a brewery and get that going before you even have the steel works. Uh, some people don't even build a steel works until much later on in the game. That's a totally viable way to do things. Just keep buying steel beams from Archibald and set up a buy order. He'll sell you some. I think Kahina will also sell you some on occasion. And it's a great way to save workforce and the maintenance cost here on the island. So, with everything set, we have all of our basic needs met. We have almost all of our luxury goods met. We'll, we'll deal with the beer later. We are ready to move on into the artisan tier. So let's jump ahead and see what happens there. All right, and artisans. The tier where a lot of people start to struggle. And my first biggest tip for the artisan tier is skip that cannery. Skip the cannery early on. Don't try to build it just yet. Canneries barely break even on the taxes versus the expense cost, and they require a rather large workforce to maintain all of that. What I suggest to do is to get to rum and sewing machines as soon as possible. Get you some artisans built, upgraded, and unlock the sewing machines. Uh, it will also unlock the variety theater, which also uh, provides you with a little bit of income from, the, uh, from having variety theater access. But you definitely want to get those sewing machines and the rum as soon as possible. Uh, oh, and don't forget to maintain that stock of beer as well. Sorry about that. I'm reading off of my notes over here. Got a little lost. Uh, but yeah, don't forget to maintain that stock of beer. Uh, beer, they pay almost double what a worker house pays for beer. So yeah, Artisan is definitely where you want to get that beer flowing because they pay a pretty penny for it. Uh, in the New World, though, we do have two colonies set up in the New World. Uh, one is for cloth and plantains right here, and the other is for our rum production. And now, your mileage may vary, of course, depending on fertility distribution, but plantains, which is the banana icon, a lot of people have trouble understanding what the plantains are. That's the plantains. They're bananas. So look for the banana icon. That's your plantains. Uh, the plantains, cotton, and sugarcane are, are the three most important ones early on. Those are the three you want to find. If you can find a single island that has all three, perfect. If you can't, grab a couple of islands. It's not going to hurt. Grab a couple of islands, set up a couple of small villages, and get those going. Uh, for my setup here particularly, plantains are being produced here at San Doranio. They're being brought down over here to Benita, uh, Benita Lucia. To be uh, consumed and then the excess is being sent over to isabella sarmento to be sold for 337 per ton um, it is a very nice profit it, it's just plantains again simple cheap easy thing to produce might as well sell some it's not going to hurt you whatsoever as you can see right here i'm picking up 50 i'll drop off a few over there and the rest goes to isabella and it's going to make me a ton of money um However, that being said, the New World is never going to be a big money-making place outside of those traded goods. You might make a couple thousand on a really heavily populated island of Abreros, but it's not going to be a lot. It's never going to compare to the Old World where the real money is at. Uh, speaking of the Old World as well, one boost a lot of play, uh, newer players miss is the public mooring. Now, they do have a higher maintenance cost, which is probably why people aren't sure about it. They're like, oh, geez, what is that thing? It costs 400 coins. Um, but they make money based on the attractiveness of your island. Now, I currently have uh, an attractiveness level of 365, and I'm making 1,314. Take out the 400 I'm spending on maintenance, and I'm getting about 900 uh yeah, about 900 profit from that. So that's not a small amount early in the game. So 
you definitely want to get a public mooring put down. You can put public moorings on any island. As long as they're over, I'd say about 250 attractiveness, you're going to make a little bit of money. Stick them down in the new world, stick them in the old world, wherever you want, put them. All they cost is money, and you're going to make a little money off of each one. Uh, <clears throat> I've also built a small zoo right up here. Uh, this little zoo right here is made using cheap items from Madame Gahina. I've got things like, you know, I've got a balloon fish, I've got a chicken, a cat, pigs, some gulls and pigeons and a chital. It's just cheap, quick items from Madame Gahina just to boost the attractiveness of the island. Every point counts. Every point of attractiveness counts, and you make money for every point of attractiveness. So you want to keep boosting and making those numbers climb steadily with zoos, museums, and eventually you want to move off things like these vulgarity items such as the slaughterhouses and pigs and soap. And you do want to think about moving off anything that pollutes from heavy factories as well so you can reclaim those lost uh, attractiveness points. Um, so, by this point, if you have maintained a steady expansion, as you can see, we have expanded the city over onto the other side of the river over here. We have kept up with all of our productions. All of our consumer goods are, are almost perfectly balanced. We have exactly what we need of everything. No massive overproduction of anything, no cr nothing crazy. It's just exactly what we need to keep our citizens happy. Um, with all of that in place, we sh we're in a good position to move on to engineers. So with that, let's jump back to where we started this video. All right, and here we are back with the current state of the city. We have a nice little population right here of just over 600 engineers being supplied with spectacles already. They already had their spectacles going, which they... Uh, provide us 25 coins just for having that supplied so it's a decent little amount um, i did have to import copper and zinc from another island that i had to set up a little just a very simple basic village on we've got workers over here but i don't even have them getting sausages right now because i don't even you know why i don't need them to have it um, if they have it that's just more workers then we all of a sudden turn it go into bread and everything just expands i don't need to give it to them they're fine with what they have at the moment uh, I'm taking the copper, zinc, and I also have cement over here being brought back over to our main island right here for reinforced concrete and to make the uh, brass for the spectacles. Um, but as of right now, everything is fully supplied to our citizens other than the recently unlocked uh, penny farthings. And everyone is very happy. As you can see right here, we have a pretty decent uh, happiness. We have an average island happiness of 24. That's not bad at all for earlier game. No items, no specialists, and just supplying them with the uh, luxury goods that they need. Now, this is a relatively small city in terms of how a lot of people build and play. I did this on purpose. I purposefully did not build a huge city spammed with tight blocks of 2x3 and 2x4 and, you know, 2x2 two two square blocks of housing. I also did this without the use of any specialists. Uh, you can see right here, I have no town halls, no trade unions anywhere, uh, no harbor masters, no items or specialists. I did this to show that even building mostly just what you need to get by is enough to maintain a balanced economy. We have a small overflow of workforce right here. Uh, 50 of each of those is actually from the uh, influence bonus for expansion, which is the conqueror effect. It gives plus 50 island workforce. So some of these are, some, the 50 of each of these is just from that. Other than that, we have a small over uh, overflow of workforce, which is not bad. It's, very, it's not a large amount. But everything is stable and I'm ready to keep expanding. So where do you go from here? I know you're looking at daunting things like uh, like the steam motors or even, you know, some people even panic over the penny farthings. You know, 
things like that. The what the pocket watch chain later on is a little bit more involved. Everyone starts to panic over these big chains. But here's the thing. You don't need them right now. Like, I don't need to produce steam motors right now. I am able to fully sustain my economy off of these trade routes. I have one, two, three, four, five, six trade routes. One, two, let's see, I think, yeah, two of them are just are just schooners and then the rest are clippers but i'm able to fully sustain my economy off of a few clippers and a couple of schooners that's it i don't need to build steam cargo ships uh, these things are this thing is massively expensive you know it, and the ships themselves are very expensive to build and maintain the steam motors chain is very expensive i don't need all of that right now I would argue that I don't even need cargo ships until investors and you start needing to transport a lot of products around because investors take a lot of stuff from a lot of different places and you're going to need the expanded cargo capacity at that point. But not right now. It's you're you're not going to need that at the moment. If you do need them at the moment, you can go buy some from Archibald and from Isabella. Um he will start selling them. I don't. I don't remember the exact trigger at the moment, but he, Isabella and Archie do sell cargo ships. It does. Sometimes it, they don't have them up event, uh, immediately. You might have to. There's a little trick you can do where you can like buy and then sell it right back to them. You don't get your full uh, full amount of money back from it, but you get some, and it. Re enlist them forces them to refresh their stock so keep a check on them if you need a cargo ship but until then clippers are fine cargo ships are for to me mid late game when you're transporting a lot of goods around um your biggest challenge with engineers is honestly going to be getting to and i it doesn't even show here because i don't have i need to unlock coffee first but your biggest challenge with engineers is going to be getting to three thousand of them to unlock the bank getting to three thousand to unlock the bank yes it's a luxury need it is not a regular need it's a luxury need but it pays so much money I would honestly try to get to 3,000 engineers before even trying to go to investors. That's what I sometimes, I, I've done that many times. I just go ahead and get the bank unlocked and have a massive, massive income base before I even get to investors. Banks are huge money makers. And the faster you get to that, the more money you're going to be making. By the time you get to the investor tier, you should have a large income base, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, or 1,000 plus, however much, depending on how, how tightly you build the city and how much you expand. Um, and you should have several million, if not tens of millions of coins in the bank already, uh, and available to you in the, you know, in the bank, technically, I guess. Um, investors are just pure money makers after that. That while their chains are a bit more complex and they can cost a lot more, the money that they pay you is absurd. But you always follow the same logic that you did when you only had farmers and workers. You monitor your production statistics. You build only as you need in order to satisfy demand. And you consider the impact of building something might have on the economy. Uh, for example, you know, instead of six gold mines in the new world because you're going to need a, a lot of abrero workforce to supply all that so that's even more production chains in the in the new world and even more logistics you have to deal with can you sustain your uh, need for gold ore from eli eli sells gold ore it's not terribly expensive could you sustain yourself on that will it be financially uh is it financially smart to do that just gotta think about these things there are so many ways to go about doing various things in this game. Um, the possibilities are really just endless. It just depends on your playstyle, how you want to do things. If you want to use items and specialists to change up production lines, uh, boost productivities everywhere. There's so many different ways to play this game and to figure out the best way that works for you. But once you get to investors, you're going to have so much freedom to just throw money at things to see what works best for you. You keep up the expansion, keep up with your goods using this production statistics screen, and, can, and 
you know, be cognizant of as you're building to be sure that you're maintaining all those supplies and the coin will just come to you. Now, I hope this little guide has helped you out a bit. Um, I was going to originally show me actually building the city over time, but it just that that method did not work out. So I figured that might be easier to go back and talk about it. But hey, you know, if you have questions or there's something you're still not clear about, go ahead and ask me down in the comments. Um, or you can feel free to join our Discord server. Uh, the link to that is also down in the description. It is my Discord server. We have a lot of great people in there. I'm in there often, as often as I can be, to help answer questions and to give feedback on stuff. So, you know, if you're looking for help, reach out. There's plenty of, uh, plenty of assistance out there to help you with everything. Uh, like and subscribe if you have not already. I'm a dedicated Anno 1800 channel. I do Let's Plays. I do guides. I am always available to help out with everybody. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you in the next one. Take care.